Neutrogena has come out with new tinted mineral sunscreen. I've tried them all out and I'm really excited to share them with you because honestly, these have to be some of the best tinted mineral sunscreens I've ever encountered from the drugstore. It's been something I've lamented for a long time that there is a paucity of good quality tinted mineral sunscreens that you can just get like at Walmart or Target. So when I saw they came out with the Pure Screen Plus Mineral UV Tint Face Liquid, I was pretty excited. I went ahead and purchased all four shades. It comes in light, medium, medium deep, Deep and deep. What is in these sunscreens? They're mineral sunscreens. They have both zinc and titanium dioxide to protect you from UVA and UVB. They are broad spectrum sunscreens, water resistant up to 80 minutes, SPF 30. The tint comes from iron oxides. We have come to learn that iron oxides and tinted sunscreens may offer some benefit in protecting you from visible light that comes from the sun. While zinc and titanium dioxide are the active sunscreen ingredients that protect you from ultraviolet radiation, the iron oxides, the inactive ingredients that give the product the tint may offer you some protection against visible light that comes from the sun. And that's important if you are someone whose skin tends to heal with hyperpigmentation, a dark mark, if you have melasma. We have come to learn that iron oxides and tinted sunscreens offer protection against those wavelengths of visible light that drive really stubborn and early onset hyperpigmentation. These formulas also have vitamin E. Vitamin E is an antioxidant and it may help in reducing the burden of free radicals, oxidative stress that are generally upon exposure to both ultraviolet radiation and then visible light from the sun, as well as infrared radiation from the sun, heat, and then all of our environmental stressors like pollution, ozone, cigarette smoke. Those free radicals directly damage the lipids in our skin through a process known as lipid peroxidation. And that sets off a cascade of inflammatory effects that can contribute to premature skin aging, DNA damage, and set the stage for the visible signs of skin aging, as well as skin cancer formation. That's all well and good, but let's talk about what these look like on the skin. They give a nice dewy hydrated finish. They don't look greasy. They don't look shiny. They don't pill, which I find can sometimes be a particular issue with mineral sunscreens that you end up with the product rolling up off the surface of the skin. And this can especially be problematic if you have an oilier skin type. Sometimes the oils on your skin end up breaking up the sunscreen film and it sort of separates and pills up. And when it does that, it's not offering you adequate protection. Another reason for pilling is if you layer products on over like an oilier moisturizer or serum or too many products on underneath basically, the sunscreen will not adhere to the skin properly. I didn't encounter that, but I've only ever layered it over a thin film of a hydrating serum, specifically my Timeless Coenzyme Q10 serum. This went on over that just fine. I have to say, when it comes to a tinted mineral sunscreen, they really did a good job nailing the balance pigments in these products because you don't get that orange look. A lot of tinted mineral sunscreens can end up looking orange, especially on certain skin tones. I didn't get that whatsoever. And the formula also does not give that yellowish look. This actually looks like a natural skin tone. The tint on these offers a very, very natural look. So much so that some of the shades for me personally on my skin looked like I was wearing just a chemical sunscreen. Chemical sunscreens, as you guys know from my videos, they're a great option. Uh, but for some some people they burn and sting, but chemical sunscreens in contrast to mineral sunscreens, they don't leave that white cast. And the idea behind tinting a sunscreen is to, to a certain extent, balance that white cast. But these mineral sunscreens, there is no opacity to them. There's nothing that gives that look of a chalky film on the skin surface. It's almost like it, it's very much so a tinted moisturizer look. That's what it looks like on the skin. You don't get that mineral opacity that you often get with other tinted mineral sunscreens. And for this reason, I think these products might end up, I say that might in a big all capital, uh, might end up working out well for people who have deeper skin tones and that I don't think they're going to leave that chalky white look that can lead to a lavender appearance to the skin that is cosmetically unacceptable for most people. Another advantage of these being mineral sunscreens is that they're generally going to be well tolerated to the eyelid skin. And for me, that of course was the case. Mineral sunscreen they tend to not burn and sting around the eyes. And I didn't encounter that with these. And importantly, perhaps because they are water resistant, I didn't get any creasing in my eyelids, which I often do get with mineral sunscreens. The other thing I really liked about these is that as I went throughout my day, I didn't notice any change in the color of the pigment on my skin. Some sunscreens, they almost, I don't know, they almost will oxidize a bit, the color at least. Has anyone ever experienced that where the color seems to change a bit? I know that can happen with foundations and makeup 
makeup that didn't occur with this whatsoever. There's no fragrance whatsoever and very minimal ingredients overall. This product, you can tell, they really focus their efforts on getting the pigments to be something that's going to be cosmetically acceptable. And I don't know if that's because Neutrogena also does makeup pretty well. Comment below what you guys think of Neutrogena makeup, but it's a brand overall that I think is one of the rare exceptions that can do both skincare exceptionally well and makeup commendably well. They have a wide range of, of makeup products. So perhaps, you know, they put their heads together and came out with these products. In my opinion, they've done a really fantastic job. Now I tried all four shades and you may be wondering, okay, how did that go on your skin type? And we'll talk about it. But I will say this, while the shades are all a very natural look, they are not gonna offer you any cosmetic camouflage as opposed to one of my other favorite tinted mineral sunscreens is the Color Science Face Shield Flex. That is almost like getting into the territory of a lightweight foundation or a BB cream or a CC cream because it actually does provide some nice cosmetic camouflage to cover up like freckles or sunspots, things that you may wanna camouflage out to give you a more even complexion. This is not going to do that. This is pretty sheer. I mean, as I mentioned earlier, it's almost like you kind of feel like the product is tricking you and you may, you're like, do I have a chemical sunscreen on? Do I have a moisturizer on? Do I even have sunscreen on? The light shade is gonna be a great option if you have really pale skin. On me, it looked okay. It wasn't noticeable. I could almost see a little bit of the peachy tint of the light shade along my hairline, but it was very subtle for me personally. But I think this would be a fantastic option for those of you who have really pale skin. I'm talking Fitzpatrick type one. You know who you are. Most tinted sunscreens, you you guys comment to me all the time. They're hard to find. A good tint, It's hard to find a good tinted sunscreen if you are that pale. Try this one out. I really think it's a great option. For me, the medium sunscreen I think is perfect. It is the one that I felt like, oh my God, am I just wearing a chemical sunscreen? I don't notice any cast. It, it, it almost looks like I'm just wearing a chemical sunscreen when I put it on. I don't get any, any indication that I have any added pigment on my skin. Like when I look along my hairline, I don't see any anything really obvious. So that one for me personally, I think is, is absolutely made for my skin. However, the medium deep I'm wearing right now, I was thinking initially it was gonna be too dark for my skin, but again, it's so sheer and the pigments in the product are so natural and the balance of the uh, different types of iron oxides that it ends up looking like I have maybe, I don't know, a lightweight bronzer on. I'm wearing, like I said, I'm wearing it currently, but I'm under artificial lights. I'm gonna put some overlays here of video clips of me wearing it in natural daylight so you guys can see. It doesn't look like, oh my gosh, do you have a foundation on or something on that's too dark? It's not noticeable in that regard. I think if you have a truly medium deep skin tone though, I, I wouldn't say this shade is out of the out of the water possibility because the pigments in it are very natural and I do think that it will balance out with your skin tone and it is actually sheer. You know, so often there'll be a tinted mineral sunscreen marketed as sheer or clear zinc and I have just come to learn that that is complete BS, except in the case of this product, I mean, I don't know, they call it Pure Screen Plus. They don't really talk about it being sheer or maybe they do somewhere on the label, I'll have to look for that. But it actually is very sheer. I don't see any indication that there's any chalkiness or zinc or, or anything of that sort. So I do think for that reason that it might end up working out well for you if you have a truly medium deep skin tone. There's no orange hue to this, there's no pinkishness and it doesn't have, again, that, that almost greenish yellow off-putting hue. I think it's a very natural shade and for that reason, I think if you truly have a medium deep skin tone, this shade may work out for you. Now, the deep shade is definitely too deep for me. I didn't actually try putting it on my face. However, I did put it on my arms to test it out and I have to say, on my arms, when I rub it in completely and blend it in and take the time to, to put it on my arm just to see how it looks, it actually looks like I got a, a spray tan or it actually looks to me like I have sunless tanner on. I think the balance of the iron oxides, which is what gives the product the tint, I think the balance of the different types of iron oxides in these really leans more toward actual natural skin hues as opposed to being overrepresented with the reds leading to a more orange or maybe the blacks tilting things to almost more of a green. And the zinc and titanium particles in this are so fine that you're really not getting any background chalkiness or cast. I think this is gonna perform pretty well on a medium to deep skin tone. At the very least, I think it's going to be what would be considered acceptable, reasonable. I, I'm really curious to see how these perform for people who have deeper skin tones because I've just been, I've been
I've been shocked at how, how good they are. I don't care for the tube packaging on these. It gets messy and it can get a little leaky when you open the nozzle, make a mess. I think it would dispense much better if it were an upright packaging or a pump, an airless pump. But the nice thing about tubes at least is that it's easier to get everything out. And when you think everything is out for your last application, you can at least cut open the tube and scrape out the remnants and, and make sure you really get everything out. So I don't know, I love tubes for that reason, but this particular tube packaging is a little messy. And I think a major issue or something that perhaps would make it better is the nozzle. The nozzle is really too uh, large. Uh, this, the opening of the nozzle is fine, but the problem is the surface area of the tip is very, is, is kind of on the wide side. So when you squeeze out the product, you end up getting leak, uh, backflow of the product around that widened tip. Whereas if it were narrower, more elongate, I think it would dispense a lot more easily. Uh, and it, it, you know, it just ends up being kind of messy and the tubes are white. And so you end up getting it on the tubes and it stays there. The consistency of these is a slightly thick fluid. They do take some time to rub in. That's the other thing. They take some time to spread on the skin. For that reason, another issue that I have with these is that you may be more likely, especially if you're in a hurry, to skip areas because it's going to take more effort to spread on the skin surface. The spread on this is a little sticky, a little stiff, requires more rubbing or rubbing and, and time spent. But that being said, the pigments don't require a lot of effort to blend in. And you know, with some tinted sunscreens, you have to spend a lot of time kind of rubbing around so you don't get that, you know, like clown makeup look. This you don't, you don't, that, this, that doesn't happen. Now this is SPF 30, which is great as an everyday sunscreen. Because it's water resistant, I think if you live somewhere where it's warm, humid, you sweat a lot, the water resistance factor is going to help ensure that it doesn't run into your eyes, helps protect against the creasing, and it also helps it just remain on the skin surface better. As far as the SPF, SPF 30 is technically more than adequate. It's a good SPF to shoot for. Personally, I have no problem using SPF 30 on a day-to-day -day basis, uh, but if I were gonna be outdoors for a real prolonged period of time, I feel more comfortable and I recommend a higher SPF just because we know that people tend to under apply sunscreen and the research suggests that choosing a higher SPF uh, makes it more likely that you get a better overall SPF value, if you will, to your face by nature of, it's kind of hard to apply it at a thick enough density to really get that true SPF. Um, and as I mentioned, with the mineral sunscreens in particular, such as this one, can be a little time consuming, spreading it on the skin surface, more prone to skip areas and thinner areas of application, under application. So I think if you're actually gonna be outdoors for a prolonged period of time, you may wanna go with a higher SPF product. But overall, I've gotta say, these are, I give these a 4.5 out of five. For a drugstore tinted mineral sunscreen, so far, these win. I like them better than the CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen. The CeraVe tinted mineral sunscreen is great, but we only get one shade with that product. And for a lot of people, it's too orange. This, you have more options. That being said, I would love to know how this actually ends up performing on deeper skin tones. I suspect it's gonna go over well. I really do believe that um, because of, I'm, I, again, I'm not seeing that background opacity. Now, if you are currently using a tinted mineral sunscreen that you love, it works out well for you, do you need to run out and buy these? No. If you have a sunscreen that you like enough to wear and reapply and it's not causing you any issues, please stick with that. Uh, you don't need to run out and buy these. If you're curious, I like them a lot. I think, you know, there's a good chance that you will like them. I like the overall background formula of these two. I find it's moisturizing, not greasy, keeps my skin feeling hydrated, protected from the element, doesn't make you feel overheated. It has silicones in it, which allow for good evaporation of sweat uh, and have astringent properties. So great option for oily skin, but it helps reduce water loss from the skin surface. Ultimately, that's going to have a moisturizing effect. So it's great for dry skin conditions too, combination skin. These are currently going for $16.99. $17, so not too bad. It is on the expensive side though for a drugstore sunscreen, but for a drugstore tinted sunscreen that is this good in my opinion, as far as what they were able to achieve with the pigments, I think that the price is worth it personally, especially if it ends up working out well for you in terms of the shade and, and being something that you like enough to wear regularly. I wanna hear from you guys though, if you have tried this out. I didn't even realize this had come out. It was suggested to me on my Amazon feed because it's a mineral sunscreen screen, no fragrance, no common allergens or irritants in the formula, although of course you can become allergic to anything. Um, I do think
think this would be a great option if you have very sensitive skin or if you have rosacea. People who have rosacea tend to get along well with mineral sunscreens. Uh, they tend to not trigger a flush and they really need protection from UV rays, a common trigger for a rosacea flare. Uh, definitely try these out, especially if you have a very pale skin, which a lot of people with rosacea do. Try the light shade if that is you. I think you will end up liking it. I'll link these in the description box in case you're curious and want to try them out. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have tried them, let me know what you think. On the end slate, I'm going to link my best sunscreens of 2022 video if you want to watch that one up next. But if y'all like this one, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye. Bye.